Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dr. Syed Sever. Today's topic of presentation is erectile dysfunction and my moderator is Dr. Mazahir. So starting with the learning objectives, we will learn in this presentation about the anatomy, physiology, epidemiology, history and clinical examination, etiology and investigations of erectile dysfunction. Starting with the definition of erectile dysfunction, is that defined as inability to attain or maintain efficient erection sufficient for the satisfactory sexual intercourse, which is previously called as impotence. Okay, now this definition is very important. Dave, you will in your OPDs come across a lot of a lot of patients who do not understand what is actually erectile dysfunction. You need to actually see whether that patient fits into the definition of erectile dysfunction. Sometimes they, they, they are worried about their intercourse timings. Sometimes they are worried about the strength of their erections. But if he, but he needs to come under this definition. Then there are other people who want to just strengthen up their abilities. So there are, there are a lot of possibilities. So you need to understand this definition and then proceed. If the patient has erectile dysfunction, then we can go. So the basis of erectile dysfunction we are going to make you understand today like why it actually happens. So little bit about the penile anatomy, which comprises of two rectile cylindrical tissues on the dorsal side, which is known as corpus cavernosum and a ventral known as corpus spongiosum. From outer to inside skin, then superficial fascia, loose areolar tissue, deep box fascia, then tunica albuginea which surrounds the uh, arpus cavernosum and tunica uh, and corpus spongiosum and the urethra inside the corpus spongiosum. And the uh, vascular supply which comprises of superficial dorsal vein which drains the skin and the subcutaneous tissue and drains into the saphenous vein and the deep dorsal vein. Uh, which drains the erectile tissue and uh, ultimately drains into the internal pudendal vein by periprostatic plexus. Uh, these are slides I have mentioned in my the, uh, diagram. Unique albuginia is composed of elastic fibers that form irregular lattice network on which collagen fibers type 1 and type 3 rest. Outer layer of tunica collagen bundles are oriented longitudinally extending from the glands penis to the proximal crura. They, they insert into the pubic rami but are absent between 5 and 7 o'clock positions in contrast to corpus spongiosum which lack an outer layer ensuring a low pressure structure during the erection. So uh, tunica uh, albuginea comprises of two layers in case of corpus cavernosum and in case of corpus spongiosum only one layer. The outer layer uh, appears to play additional role in compression of imagery veins during erection. External penile support of two ligament structures known as fundiform which arises from the colis fascia and suspensory ligament arises from the bux fascia. The main function is to attach the tunica albuginea of corpora cavernosa to the pubis and provides the support to the mobile portion of the penis. So this cross-sectional figure, we can see the sinusoids, peripheral sinusoids, and then the two layers of uh, tunica albuginea. The inner one is circular and the outer one is longitudinal in case of corpus cavernosum. But in case of corpus spongiosum, there is only circular layer of uh, tunica albuginea is present. So the neurovascular supply of penis Penis supplied by the internal iliac, which uh, forms a uh, internal pudendal, then penile artery. Penile artery supplies the penis via three uh, arteries known as dorsal penile artery, which uh, mainly supplies the glands, bulbourethral artery, which supplies the corpus spongiosum and the bulb, uh, cavernosum, cavernous artery, which supplies the caverno corpus cavernosum and hilum of the penis. It gives off many helicant branches along its course, which supply the trabecular erectile tissue present inside the corpus cavernosum and corpus spongiosum. Helicant artery in flaccid states are contracted and tortuous, but in erection, helicant arteries are straight and dilated. 
So this is the pictorial diagram in which we see the dorsal artery, uh, bulbourethral artery, cavernous artery, which arises from the internal pudendal artery. So now on the venous drainage, the three corpora, uh, corpora venous drainage, why peripheral sinusoid drains into venous. Yes, Can you go back to the previous slide, please? Okay. Dr. Mazar, can you uh, further please elaborate this diagram because this looks a very nice diagram. Uh, Dr. Sayad has already told us about the, all the branches that supply the penial artery and helical artery that remain flaccid during uh, 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 a flaccid uh, form of the penis while during erection that elongates. So can you please elaborate in this picture? Because, uh, simply uh, saying is that there is uh, during the course of erection, the arterial flow increases and the venous flow decreases and there is compression of the veins. So then the then all these tissues, they attach to the strong, the, they come against the strong tunica uh, of the corporis and they cause the erection. Now, if you see in this uh, blood supply of this penis, you can see the arterial supply, which the major arterial supply comes from the cavernous artery which supplies the two bodies of the cavernous which is which are the main erectile tissue and the bulbar urethral it's is the spongiosum which is around the urethra now these are the main arteries which are present on the dorsal surface of the penis and the bulbar urethral it comes on the ventral surface of the penis now these are all inter interconnected through the helical circumflex circumflex arteries but once you come near the gland, you see that these arteries are reversing back on the ventral surface and some supplying to the glands. It is here where these arteries, they communicate with each other and they provide this, the, the bulbo urethral and the cavernous. If you see, if I can see you on the disc, at the level of the glands, you can see they, they come together at this level. It is at this level, which is important in surgical aspects, and the veins follow the same path. Only the difference is that the if the veins are disrupted anywhere proximally, this retrograde flow of the veins from the glands supply continue to supply or drain the glands. But if both of these areas, the glands and the proximal penile arteries are damaged, then it can always lead to ischemia. So <laughs> the arterial supply is very much interconnected between these two major arteries, the cavernous and the bulbar urethral, through helical and circumferential. And there is an, a, there is a combination at the level of the glands. So this level of the glands is very important in hypospedia surgeries and stricture surgeries. So bulbar urethral artery that supplies the carpus esponjosum. This is what yeah. I from your point. So, yes, sir. The surrounding. Uh, uh, role in uh, maintaining and erection or so just apply the urethra the, the, the cavernous, the, all these arterials supply, they work together in maintaining the arterial pressure for erection because when the erection starts, the venous, it is the responsibility also of the venous plexus to constrict. It is increased inflow through the arteries, decreased outflow from the venous that causes that causes the erection, basic mechanism. So all these arteries and vessels, they work in uh, unison when it comes to the phenomenon of erection. Actually, I, I was a bit confused. Carpus esponjosum does also have a role in uh, uh, er maintaining erection, or it is just a covering of urethra to protect the urethra. I think it has a role in erection, supplying the corpus esponjosum and the uh, also part in the erection because when we but if we consider it, it in surgery the loss of corpus spongiosum during the surgery does not lead to decrease in erections okay uh, this just why i was a bit confused because what we heard from previous lecture uh, by your team that uh, during mobilization of uh, uh, corpus spongiosum during the surgery of a stricture urethra sometimes you guys have to sacrifice the bul bulbo urethral artery i guess the bulbar urethral arteries, <laughs> there is, there are surgeries in which there are bulbar sp sparing, and there, and we have seen that there is a, a decreased loss of erection. But uh, when you're operating on on the penis, there are multifactorial things, 
you are also there there can also be iatrogenic injury to the tunicas to the corporal bodies which can lose the erection but uh, the more the but there also neurovascular damage as well in this surgery so the nerves are also important as compared uh, along with the arterial supply so we can't say that if you save the artery the, the erection will be preserved you need to save the uh, nerves as well so, but there is a period of dermatitis or erectile dysfunction after every urethral surgery which gradually improves with time and this and if the arteries are damaged then they either they recanalize or the nerves are damaged and they restore themselves but after 3 months there is restoration of erectile dysfunction now this uh, phenomena why it happens is prob most probably because there is restoration of the arterial and the nerve supply thank you thanks so now comes to the venous drainage venous drainage comprises of peripheral sinusoids which drains the erectile tissue and immediately drains into the tunicular veins which uh, beneath the tunica albuginea these venules travel in the trabeculae between the tunica and the peripheral sinusoids to form subtunical venous plexus before exiting as imaginary veins these subtunical and imaginary veins are compressed during the process of erection which results in decreased venous outflow and as a result erection occurs main venous drainage of glans penis uh, and the distal two third of the corpora cavernosa uh, drains via the uh, deep dorsal vein into the periprostatic plexus and then into the internal pudendal vein but the skin and the subcutaneous tissue by multiple superficial veins run subcutaneously and unite near the root of the penis to form a superficial dorsal vein which drains into the saphenous vein so in this diagram we can see the two systems of uh, venous drainage uh, this one is a so, uh, uh, superficial dorsal vein which drains the skin and the subcutaneous tissue and ultimately drains into the uh, saphenous saphenous vein and the deep dorsal vein uh, drains the erectile tissue and ultimately drains via the periprostatic plexus into the internal pudendal vein so now comes to the vein, uh, nerve supply autonomic nerve pathway via lumbar splanchnic nerve plexus and uh, nerves into the inferior mesenteric and superior hypogastric plexus via a uh, hypogastric plexus to the pelvic plexus and the sympathetic supply to the penis from T12 to L2 segment which helps in detumescence and uh, control of ejaculation the parasympathetic supply uh, which helps in detumescence from the uh, innervation from the level of S2 to S4 somatic nerve supply are primarily responsible for the sensations of pain temperature of penile skin glands urethra and within the corpus cavernosum in which a and c fiber helps which are thinly myelinated via the dorsal nerve of penis into the pudendal nerve and then into the s2 to s4 segment uh, on of nuclei is the somato sensor uh, somato motor penile innervation which is localized in s2 to s4 segment of the spinal cord which helps in the somatosensory sensations so this is the uh, picture of the nerve supply dorsal uh, dorsal nerve and the cavernous nerves uh, uh, supplied by the pudendal nerve and then into the pelvic plexus uh, now you can see sir uh, uh, that this, how the arterial venous and the nerves they play a very important role so this is why the detailed discussion between the arterial supply the venous supply and the neurovascular supply because these three have to be at the back of your mind for to regarding the any pathological etiology of erectile dysfunction it is a multifactorial thing but if it is if it is arising from th these three origins then we need to evaluate so which is why you uh, which is why coming back to the previous question that you cannot say whether whether there is arterial insufficiency or venous insufficiency or neurovascular but you need to actually investigate to see which of the three is a cause of erectile dysfunction if other things have been ruled out so now comes to the hemodynamic and mechanism of tumescence and deutumescence uh, 
इन कॉर्पोरा कैवरनोजा इन फ्लैसिड स्टेट ब्लड स्लोली डिफ्यूज इज फ्रॉम सेंट्रल टू पेरीफोनल साइनोसाइड्स एंड द ब्लड गैस लेवल आर सिमिलर टू डोज ऑफ द वीनस ब्लड Penile is a erectile tissue which composed of cavernous smooth muscle and the smooth muscle of arterioles which plays important role in erectile process in the flaccid state the smooth muscles are tonically contracted allowing only a small amount of arterial blood to enter into the corpora uh, in this flow chart we can see the normal pathway of the erection Uh, starting with the uh, sexual impulse, then release of neurotransmitter, which is in the form of nitrous oxide or any other chemical substrate, acts on the smooth uh, smooth muscle uh, receptors, causes smooth muscle relaxation, uh, tumor sense, venous occlusion, rigidity, and as a result, erection occurs. But in the case of uh, nitrous oxide, what are the other chemical substrates? Uh, the other chemical substances include papaverin and a few others we will mention in a uh, later slide corpus spongiosum and the glands of penis during erection the arterial flow increases in similar manner however the pressure of the corpus spongiosum and glands is only one third to one half of the corpora cavernosa because of the tunical covering which is thin over the corpus spongiosum and virtually absent over the glands of the penis and ensures a minimal venous occlusion during full erection phase partial compression of the do deep dorsal and circumflex veins between between the bux fascia and the engorged corpora contributes a glandular tumescence so in this uh, picture we can see the uh, uh, normal mechanism of uh, erection this is during the uh, flaccid uh, flaccid state only small amount of blood enters and causes uh, um, and there is a venous efflux and all the blood drains out of the uh, out from the penis by the venous efflux and the valves are open but during the but during erection there is a lot amount of uh, blood enters into the penis and due to closure of the venous valves only small amount of venous efflux occurs and as a result erection occurs so, so you see that erection when it comes here this tunica albuginea so consider it, it acts as a as a wall as a uh, wall so when there is when the arterial dilatation occurs the and the spongiosum is increasing uh, in in volume because of the arterial dilatation the veins are being compressed against the strong tunica albuginea to aajkal wo ek phrase hai na ki deewar ke sath laga dete hain to the veins ko deewar ke sath laga diye to then the erection comes out theek hai chal okay <laughs> so these are the deewar ke sath lagana yahan pe to fayda mand hoga bas हर जगह ही दीवार के साथ लगाना फायदेमंद हो रहा है दीज आर द फेजेस ऑफ इरेक्शन फर्स्ट वन इज द फ्लैसिड फेज इन विच केवर्न स्मूथ मसल्स आर कॉन्ट्रेक्टेड साइनोसाइड्स आर इम्पिटी ओनली मिनिमम आर्टीरियल इनफ्लो अकर्स सेकेंड इज द लेटेंट और फीलिंग फेज इन विच इंटरनल इंक्रीज ब्लड फ्लो फ्रॉम दुडेंडल आर्टरी इन टू द पिनाइल आर्टरीज दैन ट्यूमिसंस इन विच राइजिंग इंटर केवरनोजल प्रेशर एंड इरेक्शन अकर्स एंड इन द फोर्थ वन इज फुल इरेक्शन फेज इन विच इंक्रीज इंटर केवरनोजल प्रेशर अप टू हंड्रेड एम Mm of Hg, which causes penis to become full erect, uh, and then is the uh, rigid erection phase in which further increases in pressure to several hundred mm Hg, and uh, and along with this, issue covernous muscle contraction, and in the detumescence phase following ejaculation, sympathetic discharge resumes. There is smooth muscle contraction and vasoconstriction, reduced arterial flow, and blood is expelled from. the uh, sinusoid spaces as a result detumescence occurs so in this picture we can see uh, uh, on the left side uh, in the uh, flaccid state in which the sinusoids are narrow uh, subtunical veins and the imaginary veins are dilated and drain and draining the uh, blood out of the penis but during the erection phase 
subtunical and imaginary veins are compressed between the two layers of the uh, tunica albuginea uh, as a result uh, uh, blood is pulled into the penis causes erection or dilatation of the uh, sinusoids So now come to the functional classification of erectile dysfunction, which comprises of systemic disease, psychological drugs, arterial disorders, cavernosa, neurological, and hormonal. We will discuss one by one. Okay. Now, in the next few slides, you will. What we'll try to make you understand is that if erectile dysfunction is not arteriogenic, not uh, venogenic, and not neurogenic, then these three are not just the only pathology it is such a melt, diverse multifactorial thing that erectile dysfunction can even happen from the simple fact that he, that the patient has a horrible wife causing psychogenic causing psychological problems so this is how diverse erectile dysfunction is theek hai not, not just a horrible wife maybe the workplace is very stressful wife uh, wife has no no significant role in psychogenesis जी सर माइट बी ऑल्सो एक्सप्लेनिंग वाई द हाउस इज फुल टूडे सर ऑल द साइकोलॉजिकल प्रॉब्लम आर नॉट ओरिजिनेटिंग फ्रॉम so now come to the arteriogenic causes atherosclerotic or traumatic arterial occlusive disease of the hypogastric cavernous helicon arterial tree results in decreased perfusion pressure and arterial flow to the sinusoid spaces causes increased time to maximal erection and decreased rigidity of the erect vein atherosclerosis and cardiovascular disease has high prevalence of erectile dysfunction has been reported in men with coronary cerebral uh, cerebral or vascular peripheral vascular disease hyperlipidemia also causes atherosclerotic process in the sinusoids as a result there is erectile dysfunction and hypertension is a independent risk factor of erectile dysfunction as a result of hyper uh, hypertension results in ischemic heart disease and renal failure which ultimately leads to the erectile dysfunction Uh, mechanism of vascular erectile dysfunction in arteriogenic erectile dysfunction oxygen tension in corpus cavernosum uh, uh, corpus cavernosum blood is less than than in the psychogenic erectile dysfunction structural changes occurs a decrease in oxygen tension may diminish the cavernous trabecular smooth muscle content which leads to diffuse venous leakage or enhanced basal or myogenic to tone has been observed in arteries from hypertensive patients or impaired endothelial dependent smooth muscle relaxation uh, other causes includes uh, degenerative tunical changes which uh, which may be due to the peyronie's disease old age diabetes traumatic injury of the tunica albuginea uh, in case of penile fracture can uh, can impair the compression of subtunical or imaginary veins in peyronie's disease the inelastic tunica albuginea may prevent the imaginary veins from closing as a result patient presents with erectile dysfunction loss of compliance of uh, penile sinusoid associated with increased deposition of collagen and decreased elastic fibers and alteration of alpha adrenoreceptor or decreased nit nitric oxide release may heighten the smooth muscle tone and impair relaxation in response to endogenous muscle relaxation so uh, in this we can see the uh, this is uh, somewhat uh, similar from the previous uh, diagram in this uh, uh, increase arterial influx occurs but no uh, firm erection occurs in patient because there is vascular leakage due to the uh, due to defect in the venous valves so now come to the gap junction these intercellular communication channels are responsible for synchronization and coordination of the erectile tissue acquired venous shunt uh, the result of operative correction of priapism may result into glands and glands to cavernosum or cavernosum to spongiosum shunting as a result patient presents with erectile dysfunction sonic hedgehog homolog uh, has been shown to regulate the cavernous smooth muscle apoptosis any defect in this mechanism uh, results in the increase apoptosis of the smooth muscle of the penile and results in uh, erectile dysfunction 
वेरिएबल कोडिंग सीक्वेंस प्रोटीन्स हैज बीन प्रोपोज एज अ मार्कर ऑफ इरेक्टाइल फंक्शन एटलीस्ट थ्री होमोलोग जीन्स आर गिविन एयर डाउन रेगुलेशन ऑफ एच एस एम थ्री ए हैज बीन रिपोर्टेड इन मैन विद इरेक्टाइल डिसफंक्शन सो नाउ कम टू द इंडोक्रोनोलॉजिक डिसऑर्डर्स एनी डिसफंक्शन ऑफ द हाइपोथेलमिक पिच्यूटरी एक्सिस कैन रिजल्ट इन हाइपोगोनेडिज्म हाइपर एंड हाइपोगोनेडोट्रॉफिक हाइपोगोनेडिज्म में रिजल्ट इन टूनिकल इंजरी सर्जरी ट्यूमर ड्यू टू ट्यूमर इंजरी और सर्जरी और मम्स और काइटस डिफेक्ट्स इन द फॉलोइंग हारमोस रिजल्ट इन रेक्टाइल डिसफंक्शन विच इनक्लूज लो लेवल ऑफ टेस्टोस्टीरोन एज वी नो दैट टेस्टोस्टीरोन इज रेस्पॉन्सिबल टू इनहेंस द सेक्शुअल इंटरेस्ट इंक्रीज फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ सेक्शुअल एक्ट इंक्रीज द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ नॉक्टर्नल इरेक्शन बट हैज लिटल और नो इनफेक्ट ऑन द फेंटेसी इंट्यूस्ड और विजुअली स्टिमुलेटेड इरेक्शन हाइपर प्रोलेक्टिनीमिया हाइपोथायरोडिज्म एंड हाइपोथायरोडिज्म डिस्कस फॉलोइंग इन द नेक्स्ट साइड टेन टू नाइनटीन परसेंट ऑफ रेक्टाइल डिसफंक्शन इज न्यूरोजेनिक कॉमन ड्यू टू दैलेमिक साइब्रोवेस्कुलर एक्सीडेंट इन पेशेंट्स विद पार्किसन डिजीज स्ट्रोक इंसेफलाइटस ट्यूमर डिमेंशिया एल्जेमर डिजीज शायद रेगर सेंड्रोम एंड ट्रामा और स्पाइनल एबनॉर्मेलिटीज लाइक स्पाइन बायफिडर डिसकर्नियशन सरिंगोमेलिया ट्यूमर ट्रांसफोसमलाइटस और मल्टीपल स्क्लियोसिस Hypotonic importance from pelvic surgical procedure is reportedly in patients with radical prostatectomy which is around 43 to 100% due to close relation of the neurovascular supply of the penis. In men with posterior urethral injury early annulment has been associated with potency preservation rate relative to the delayed anastomosis which is around 34% versus 42% in patients with delayed realignment of after urethral injury so now the psychogenic cause rectal dysfunction is usually a mixed condition that may be predominantly functionally norm uh, functionally or physical two possible mechanisms have been proposed to examine the inhibition of erection in psychogenic dysfunction in the first one direct inhibition of spinal erection center by the brain as an exaggeration of normal sacral inhibition and the second mechanism excessive sympathetic outflow or elevated peripheral corticoid amines which may increase the penile smooth muscle tone and pre and prevent the necessary relaxation or uh, necessary relaxation of sinusoids and trabeculae to hold the blood so these are the few points uh, in which we can differentiate between the psychological and the physical causes of erectile dysfunction in the in physical erectile dysfunction the onset is gradual while in the psychological the onset is sudden uh, in the in physical erectile dysfunction the, uh, the disease is progressive but in psychological often on progressive or maybe not uh, in physical it is situational and uh, it is uh, uh, it is not situational and not dependent on the partner but in uh, in psychological it uh, depends upon the situation in adequate response to five uh, five uh, phosphodiesterase five inhibitors in case of physical and a good response in case of psychological erectile dysfunction morning erection uh, is low in the physical and morning erection is normal in the psychological erectile dysfunction <laughs> so these few drugs mentioned here uh, which causes the erectile dysfunction includes antihypertensive in which diuretics beta blocker antipsychotic antidepressant anxiolytic anticonvulsant antiandrogen digoxin statins as two receptor blockers opiates cytotoxic drugs antiretroviral tobacco and the alcohol this is a pathophysiological chart uh, a few of the components we have studied which includes vasculogenic neurogenic central cause or peripheral causes anatomical hormonal mixed drug induced psychogenic and trauma which we have uh, studied in previous slides so now come to the aging and systemic disease and other causes aging is a progressive decline in sexual function in healthy aging men greater potency to erection less turgidity loss of forceful erection forceful ejaculation decrease volume and longer refractory period 
decrease frequency and duration of doctor led erection penile tactile sensitivity also decrease in aged men heightened uh, cavernous muscle tone may also contribute to decrease the erectile response progressive decline of smooth muscle content and increase in the caliber of vascular spaces in the corpus cavernosum with increasing age significant decrease in the gap junction protein connexin 43 and change in nitric oxide expression or activity metabolic syndrome which includes glucose intolerance insulin resistance obesity dyslipidemia and hypertension high prevalence of erectile dysfunction occurs in men with metabolic syndrome which is around 26.7% the prevalence of metabolic uh, syndrome increases with age and is associated with lower androgen levels they also found that lower total testosterone level along with lower sex hormone binding globulins levels which predicts higher incidence of metabolic syndrome the prevalence of erectile dysfunction is three times higher in, in diabetic patients in chronic renal failure patient uremic uh, con uh, uremia contributes to development of erectile dysfunction including disturbance of the hypothalamic pituitary testis sex hormone axis hyperprolactinemia accelerated atherosclerotic disease in the arteries and psychological factors <laughs> Patient with pulmonary disease also uh, presents with uh, erectile dysfunction, but the cause in this case is that patient feels fear, aggravating dyspnea during the sexual intercourse. So now come to the primary erectile dysfunction, which is a lifelong inability to initiate or maintain erection, beginning with the first sexual in encounter, usually related to anxiety about sexual performance, traumatic early sexual experience, or misinformation. the other cause in includes uh, includes micro penis symmetrical hypoplasia of the phallus is often related to the urethral male development such as hypospadias or in the case of epispadias direct the erectile the tissue in such cases often functions normally but the sexual dysfunction is usually relates to the lack of penile length degree of cordy rather than the erectile dysfunction vascular abnormalities is structural abnormalities of cavernous tissue such as absence or replacement of uh, replacement of uh, uh, tissue or trabecular by fibrous tissue but externally normal phallus other including hypoplasia of the cavernous arteries veno occlusive dysfunction which results into cavernous venous drainage patient develop erectile dysfunction after a period of normal function known as a secondary erectile dysfunction so we have to ask the multiple uh, questions regarding uh, and to diagnose that erectile dysfunction which includes about the sexual history uh, uh, to know the uh, onset was it uh, sudden or gradual duration presence or absence of uh, nocturnal penile tumor sense uh, able to maintain erection or not loss of libido or sexual function symptom questionnaire which is international index erectile function questionnaire which, which we will discuss in the later slide medical causes which includes cardiovascular disease diabetes hypertension dyslipidemia endocrine neurological uh, previous surgery penile or pelvic surgery radiotherapy or trauma around one third of the men present with the prostatic cancer treatment presents with erectile dysfunction and also the uh, psychosocial mm. uh psychosocial question regarding stress anxiety depression patients expectation or relationship details drugs and social history in clinical examination we, we will examine about the, the the cardiovascular system neurological abdominal secondary sexual characteristics external penile examination on dre <coughs> uh this is the question here uh, international uh, index of erectile dysfunction which comprises of uh, 15 questions and totally five domains in which we will see the orgasmic uh, erectile function orgasmic function uh, we will ask about the history of the patient uh, about the ejaculation about the, uh, the, the relationship in this 
so uh, these are the baseline uh, laboratory investigations complete blood count serum uh, chemistry is uh, the, to to know the fasting blood glucose lipid profile testosterone and hormone level thyroid function and psa so now come to the specialized evaluation and testing the first one is the combined intracavernous injection and stimulation it involves intracavernous injection of a vasodilatory drugs or a direct pharmacological stimulus combined with genital or audiovisual sexual stimulation and the erectile response is observed and rated by an independent assessor a normal uh, cis test based upon the assessment and suitability of the rigid erection is understood uh, in this so uh, these are the few uh, agents which causes which induces and inhibits the penile erection papaverine phentolamine phenoxybenzamine alprostadel calcitonin gene related peptide nitric oxide guanylate cyclase activators and on the right side are few inhibitors a normal cis test uh, means that the normal erectile hemodynamics false positive results may occur in 20% of patients with borderline inflow as defined in the measurement of 25 to 35 uh, cm per second peak systolic velocity and false negative results occurs in mostly patient with inadequate dosage and the second modality is the duplex ultrasonography also known as a gray scale or color coded which is most reliable and least invasive test color coded duplex ultrasound indicates the direction of blood flow in which the red designating uh, direction towards the probe and the uh, and the blue away from the probe Uh, so a few measurements are given uh, in in uh, patient with normal uh, penile or erection the peak systolic uh, peak systolic velocity is more, will be more than 30 cm per second and end diastolic velocity will be less than 5 cm per second and resistive index uh, more than 0.9 and in case of arterial uh, arterial insufficiency peak systolic velocity will be less than 30 cm per second and end diastolic velocity less than 5 in veno uh, uh, occlusive cavernous dysfunction peak systolic velocity more than 30 uh, end diastolic velocity more than 5 and resistive index less than 0.7 so, so uh, mentioning these numbers these numbers are very important because once you have ruled out all other uh, cardi- cardiological neurological psychological factors from your history and examination then once you do this ultrasound these values they come into these values are your baseline on which you assess whether it is arteriogenic and venogenic and then proceed uh, forward to investigate whatever cause that is seen on this ultrasound <laughs> Uh, duplex ultrasound after pharma- pharmaco uh, stimulation or cis or second line evaluation of penile blood flow the probe should be the uh, uh, between 7.5 to 12 million hertz probe color pulse doppler flow at the baseline uh, noted and then every 5 minutes up to 20 minutes after the injection of vasodilator uh, these few figures are mentioned uh, which shows the uh, state of flaccid latent duodenal full rigid and duodenal uh, stages of artery after the injection of vasodilators dynamic infusion cavernosometry or cavernosography indicated for patients who are suspected to have site specific vasculogenic leak resulting from perineal or penile uh, trauma or presents with lifelong erectile dysfunction existence of veno occlusive dysfunction is indicated by the failure to increase intracavernous pressure to the level of the mean systolic blood pressure with saline infusion of uh, or the demonstration of rapid drop of intracavernous pressure after cessation of saline in this we use the two cannulas on in both the cavernosa tissues and we push a saline 3 to 5 um, uh, liter per minute and we will note the cavernosometry and graphy and we will see the response penile angiography is reserved for the patients with erectile dysfunction secondary to the traumatic arterial disruption or patient with history of penile compression injury and we will consider penile revascularization surgery uh, 
In this, we inject the contrast in the internal pudendal artery and evaluate the radiographic appearance of internal iliac, internal pudendal, and penile arteries. These are the few historical and investigation studies to uh, see the penile blood flow, which includes penile brachial pressure index, penile plethysmography, radioisotopic penography, penile near infrared spectrometry, uh, cavernous smooth muscle content. So now come to the psychological evaluation. Penile tumor sense and rigidity monitoring. This test we perform in patient with psychophysiological evaluation. It measures the number of episodes, detumor sense, and circumference changing in strain gauges. Maximum rigidity duration of nocturnal erection. During a nocturnal penile tumor sense rigidity, the uh, normal values are between four to five episodes per night. In this, we use two electrolytes, one at the base of the penis and other at the level of corona. Audiovisual and vibratory stimulation. Erotic stimulation by explicit videotape material with monitoring and the use of reliable as well as time and cost effective alternate to the differentiating between the organic and psychogenic erectile dysfunction. Neuromaging is also very important in diagnosing the erectile dysfunction, which includes PET and functional MRI, which have been used to association between the uh, uh, video sexual stimulation or erectogenic pharmacological stimulus. Brain areas which are associated with sexual arousal are anterior, cingulate, insula, medulla, hypothalamus, and secondary somatosensory cortices. So these are the few indications in which we will go for the MRI, which includes several central, severe central hypogonadism, suspicious of pituitary disease, and to rule out any mass lesion in the brain, which causes the erectile dysfunction. Neurological evaluation uh, uh, divided into two, somatic nerve, nervous system, and the autonomic somatic nervous system includes bioesthesiometry, genito cerebral evoked potential, dorsal nerve conduction, velocity, sacral evoked response. And in autonomic nervous system, we will see the heart rate variability and sympathetic skin response, corpus cavernosum electromyography, and single potential analysis of cavernous electrical activity. In hormonal evaluation, we will see uh, uh, the following disorders, uh, whether the patient has uh, the uh, 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 testosterone deficiency, hyperprolactinemia, hyperthyroidism, or diabetes mellitus. Serum uh, gonadotrophin measurements, uh, measurements have to localize the source of hypogonadism. Testosterone re release involves the integrative activity of the hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis and its regulating feedback mechanism. Any disruption at this level results in hypogonadism. In primary, hy primary hypogonadism, low uh, uh, testosterone level uh, causes decreased negative feedback to the hypothalamus and pituitary. As a result, increased secretion of LH and FSH. In case of secondary hypogonadism, normal or low level of LH and FSH and also low level of testosterone, which uh, suggests there is a central disorder. So now come to the testosterone uh, uh, measurements. Testosterone circulates uh, in three fraction, uh, free uh, free testosterone about 0.5 to 3 percent, tightly bound to bound to the sex hormone binding globulins, which is around 30 percent, and loosely bound to the albumin and other serum proteins is about 67 percent. Free testosterone and albumin bound portion make up the bioavailable or the active form of the testosterone fractions. The relative concentration of carrier proteins. A sex hormone binding protein and albumin modulates the androgen functions. So now come to the serum prolactin measurement. Hyperprolactinemia, whether from a pituitary adenoma or, due to, or any drug, results in reproductive and sexual dysfunction. Hyperprolactinemia is associated with low circulating level of testosterone to, due to suppression of the radiotopin releasing hormone. Also impairs the LH secretion, which is required for the testosterone production. Uh, hypothyroidism causes diminished to libido and increased adrenergic tone uh, and the hypothyroidism results in low testosterone secretion and elevated prolactin levels which contributes to erectile dysfunction. 
so now the uh, ua guidelines uh, in the first one take a comprehensive medical and sexual history in every patient presenting with the erectile dysfunction consider psychosexual development including life stressors cultural aspects cognitive thinking style of the patient regarding their sexual performance as a strong and use of validated uh, questionnaire related to the erectile dysfunction to assess the sexual function uh the questionnaire that we have uh, we mentioned in previous slide international index of erectile dysfunction and effect of specific treatment include a focused physical examination in initial assessment of patient with erectile dysfunction to identify the underlying medical condition and the comorbid of genital disorder that may be associated with erectile dysfunction assess the laboratory tests including glucose lipid profile testosterone level uh and uh, know the reversible risk factors and lifestyle that can be modified include it also include a specific diagnostic test in the initial evaluation of erectile dysfunction these are that strongly recommended thank you